Okay, guys, we are rapidly approaching the release of the next Star Wars movie. And when I think about Star Wars, uh, the first thing I think about is lightsabers. And when I think about lightsabers, the first thing I think about is let's get it individualized and see how cool we can make it look. So what we're going to do today is let's see how fast we can get it from a solid model um, out of SolidWorks, individualize, and let's get it set up and get it rendered out. So uh, here I've got a model of a lightsaber. Okay, that's just a multi-body part that was modeled inside of SolidWorks. Uh, you can see I've got my little beam there that I'm going to utilize and visualize. So the first thing is let's get this thing out of SolidWorks and let's get it in to visualize. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my visualize add-in. There it is there. And of course, this visualize add-in allows us to, in one touch, get our model from SolidWorks into visualize. I can export it a few different ways. I can save it out if I don't have visualize installed on my machine or I prefer to have it in an external file first. Uh, I can export advanced if I want to monitor this file so that if any changes made in SolidWorks are automatically reflected inside of visualize. This will also export at a part level inside of visualize so that I can apply appearances to different parts. What I'm going to do today is we're going to do an export simple. So this is going to let me um, export everything on a visual uh, or a appearance based uh, grouping. So anything that has the same appearance in SolidWorks is going to have the same appearance inside of SolidWorks Visualize. It's going to make me very uh, easily be able to apply appearances quickly um, and get this lightsaber looking the way that I want it without having to go through and apply an appearance to every single little part. Okay, so we've got our part inside of Visualize. I'm gonna go ahead and just close down SolidWorks um, just to free up a few more resources here. And first thing I'm gonna do is let's create a quick new camera. Okay, so this is the camera uh, that gets imported from SolidWorks. The nice thing is that if I had set up a shot inside of SolidWorks, if I did have an environment that I wanna bring in, all of that is imported uh, in Visualize 2018. Um, so in this particular case, I'm actually gonna create my own camera. I'm just gonna create a new camera there. And I'm actually not gonna use the default plate that comes in. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is set up my shot. So here I've got my camera, but you can see um, that you know my lightsaber sticking straight up but maybe in this case I want to have kind of a sideways shot maybe I want to show it lying down so what we can do is if I go into model view I'm gonna grab the whole model and I'm just gonna rotate it okay now in this case my default pivot points down here um, I could also kind of center my pivot around my part in this particular case don't really care too much just want to move this thing sideways that looks pretty good um, one thing here as well, if I just reset this real quick, I could rotate this by these buttons over here, right? I could just do an X rotation 90 degrees, right? Uh, so in this case, that's actually pretty good. I can rotate this where I want it. Maybe I want to be able to show off some of those buttons there. Uh, and then, of course, I'm below the floor. So we're going to go ahead and snap that to the floor uh, just to make sure um, that we're good in our product shot. So we can kind of set this up. We can move it into place with our camera. We're done rotating or manipulating, so we're good there. Maybe add a little bit of perspective. So I can use the Alt key and just um, I use my mouse scroll. And then, of course, I can use Control to kind of pan this around. Or I can use any of the camera tools up here, right? So I can kind of tumble, pan that up, pan that a little bit. Maybe tumble a little bit more. I kind of like having the beam going off into nowhere. Kind of looks cool, I think. Uh, but that looks pretty good. I'm okay with that setup. So I've got it kind of set up the way that I want it. So let's go ahead and paint uh, our part with our appearances. Uh, so because I brought it out with the appearance setting, this is very, very easy. So I can just go into my libraries. Um, I'm already in my appearance mode, so we can start kind of making this look the way that we want it. So we can start with maybe the base of the lightsaber. Um, I am partial to making this thing titanium. So we can just go ahead and drag it, drop it, right? And of course, we kind of see that update uh, automatically and then this black part here I'd like to make a plastic so we can go ahead and jump into our plastics folder maybe a volcano gray I like that um, except maybe let's uh, let's turn off our movements here let's go to our appearance selection and maybe for this um, we're gonna go with a little bit more of a roughness 
so it's not quite as sheeny. And I'm gonna go with a darker color here, maybe bring it down to a little bit more of a black. And even our base titanium here, I'd rep for this to be a little bit shinier, so we're gonna bring the roughness down. There we go, I like that. Uh, for the buttons, we can make the buttons maybe a rubber, right? So that you can see this is very, very easy. We're just finding the appearance that we want and dragging it and dropping it on what we want the appearance to look like, right? So now we can do the buttons. Now in this case, I'm gonna use an emissive. So these are really cool appearances. So these actually emit light. In this particular case, I'm gonna go with a red light onto this one here. Um, and maybe I don't, I don't really want it quite that bright. So we're just gonna bring down some of the brightness on it, maybe to around there. Um, and we can up the brightness. In this particular case, maybe we want this set at 20. Okay, it's just so I want it a little bit brighter looking. Now, I've got to make one for the green as well. I didn't have a green one on my list, but nicely, in Visualize, I can do a quick copy, Control-C, Control-V, and we can paste that appearance over, and I can call that appearance green light, and maybe just change to whatever hue of green I'd like, right? Um, that looks pretty good. We'll go with that. I can go ahead and drop that on that appearance there. So everything's looking pretty good. Maybe we'll just throw, uh, and in fact, you know, maybe I'm okay with my shot here, but I don't want to adjust it. So I can go ahead and just jump to a different camera. Uh, maybe this one here. And on the back of this thing, I've got a little ring here. That one I like in Chrome. I'm going to do that in Chrome. I am a Chromaholic, so love it. And we can do bronze back here on the end. Okay, so we we've kind of taken care of that. We can go back to our main camera and just pop on something for the kind of the laser beam, right? What's coming out of the, the, the lightsaber. So in this particular case, I'm going to use another emissive. I'm just going to use a regular kind of a Xeon light, and then I'm going to adjust it from there. So in this case, this one's kind of white by default. It's got a little bit of a blue tinge to it, um, but maybe I want to make this lightsaber blue, and I'm going to make it really blue. I want it up here. Maybe like that, okay? And we can up the brightness a little bit. So maybe we up the brightness to 50. And maybe it will apply something, you know, maybe a different environment. So right now you can see how all of the light is reflecting off of our parts. Uh, but maybe that's not what we want. We want it to look a little bit different. Uh, in this case, I want this to look a little bit more dramatic. So our environments can control all of that for us. Uh, in this case, maybe I want to use more of a high contrast environment to really give me more of a dramatic look. I really like that. That's gonna work out. And of course, I can always use the environment background or I can just use a plain color background. Okay, in fact, I'm okay with that. But now you can see the beam, okay, sure, it's light. It doesn't really look like a lightsaber, right? A lightsaber's got a lot of emanating glow to it. So we can accomplish that using our bloom option in our camera. So if I turn on enable bloom on my camera, it's gonna kind of halo effect any bright parts of my scene and I can control how crazy that gets, right? I can control it with the radius, I can control it with the intensity, right? And really get the look that I'm going for. In this particular case, I'm, I'm actually, I'm kind of okay with that, right? I can control my threshold, which controls, you know, how bright does something have to be before we start haloing it. Even my lights here, you can see, they've got a little bit of a glow to them. If I were to lower the brightness, right? It would change how much those glow. So let's say we want the brightness of 10, not quite, uh, as crazy, right? So that looks pretty good. I like how this is looking. So we can go ahead and render this out. Right now, notice this whole time before I get there, we've been in fast mode. So as of 2017, uh, in, a, in a later service pack, but definitely in 2018, uh, we've got this nice little speed versus quality. So a lot of times, even here in fast mode and quality mode, it looks very, very close to what you would get in accurate. To show you a difference, here's speed. Okay, you can see you don't quite have all the shadows going on. Right? If I go to quality mode, right, it looks a lot more realistic. So a lot of times you don't even have to go into accurate mode anymore. And in fact, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So you get really, really fast results. Uh, of course, if I wanted to create any kind of lights here, if I wanted to add any kind of highlight to this, I could using these new area lights that we have in um, inside of Visualize 2018 Professional. So I could go ahead and say maybe add uh, a new light and I can just say, hey, I want it to light right there, right? 
and then I can control a lot of stuff about this. I can control how bright it is. Maybe I don't want it to be super, super bright. We can bring it down a little bit, right? Uh, and maybe we can take the temperature down a little bit too. Make it a little bit on the, uh, oh, maybe not too much. I kind of liked it when it was a little bit whiter there. Cool. Um, and of course we've got a, a bunch of different light types. We can go with planes, tubes, discs, all types. So if I want to do say a tube light, right, give me a little bit more of a softer look. Uh, and that looks pretty good. So that's really cool because that's all just one touch. And if I wanted to kind of move where this was right here, I was maybe I want to light up down here, right? I can change exactly where I'm, uh, I'm looking just with really with one touch, right? So that looks pretty good. And now I'm ready to render this out. So we can go ahead and drop it through the render. We can choose our image format. Um, you know, do we want to send this out as a VR or as a just a regular camera? What's our resolution? In this case, I'm going to send it out to my queue. So this is really cool with Pro as well. We can stack all of this stuff up, especially if I want to do multiple shots or I want to do multiple projects at once. Stack them all up, and then when it's time to go for lunch, you hit go, and it's going to go ahead and create that for us. So that's you know you can see very very quickly we can take our render right from SolidWorks, get it into SolidWorks Visualize in no time flat. We can have it painted. Uh, we can have it set up, we can control that glow there with the bloom, and those new area lights are fantastic, especially for highlighting um, certain parts of our render.